Hello everyone, Spider Pilot 747, soon to be known as Arlington Matrix, and uh, today we're going to be taking a look here at rotations about an arbitrary axis. Now I did see a question on the channel this morning about that, so I thought uh, I might as well make just a quick video explaining this process here. Um, so basically, first things first, we need to know about quaternions, and uh, basically to know about quaternions, we kind of need to know how those are derived. So, first, what is a quaternion? It's kind of a strange sounding name. Well, first, we have numbers. So, we all know what numbers are. 1, 2, 3.5, etc. Next on the list, we have complex numbers. Complex numbers are kind of like two-dimensional numbers. You have your scalar number 1, and then you have some number i, where i is uh, basically defined as the square root of negative 1. So what are quaternions? Quaternions are an extension of this complex number field. Now, they've tried, the person who basically invented quaternions, they tried to do like i, j, so 1 plus i plus j. But there was something missing, and it just didn't work. And what they found is they needed another number. So you'd have 1 plus i plus j plus k. And that formed your quaternion. How, you may ask? Well, basically, when you go to do addition, it works just like regular addition. But when you go to do a multiplication, i times i is going to be negative 1. j times j is going to be negative 1. i times j... What's that going to be? Is that going to be negative i? Is it going to be positive i? That's where this confusion started to come about, and we just couldn't use this old method here, this uh, attempted method, which didn't really work. So what he did instead is he extended it to i, j, and k. Um, now when you do the multiplication for this, scalar multiplication is exactly the same as it should be, but vector or these i, j, k, these complex multiplications, you actually have something like this. You have i, j, k, positive being clockwise. So, basically, the way that this works, this is how I draw it out because it's easy to use. If you have i times j, and you're going in, that means you're going in this direction, then that means you get positive k. If you have j times i, that means you're going counterclockwise, so you're going to get k, but it's going to be negative. And that's just an easy way to remember that. Now, let's take a look at ro rotations about an arbitrary axis. Now, rotations about an arbitrary axis are going to be very interesting using quaternions because it's not a single multiplication. You have to actually do two multiplications in order to do this. Now, the way that quaternions tend to be displayed is you'll have a plus v b being a vector, a being a scalar. And so when you do quaternion rotations, you're going to have some vector that you want to rotate. Let's say, so we want to rotate vector u about vector b, vector, vector v, sorry. v is some arbitrary axis. So how do we do that? We have vector u And that's going to be equal to in some three-dimensional vector. We also have vector v. That's going to be our axis of rotation. Now, how do we define this vector v? This has to be a unit vector. If it's not a unit vector, then it's going to cause problems for us. Now, vector u, that can be basically anything. How do we define the quaternion, then? We're going to have some vector a and we're going to have some multiple of v. Because when we're multiplying this, we're going to be using unit quaternions. Now, I'll just quickly show you exactly how this would, this would be performed. We'll have u prime, that's our rotated vector, and u prime is going to be equal to, we'll have quaternion q, which will be made up from v. Then we will be multiplying that by our vector u, in a quaternion representation, and that will then be multiplied by q inverse, 
or Q prime as I like to, or Q star as I like to call it, which is basically V only if you're making your vector portion negative. The reason you need to do this is because if you just did some rotation Q U, then you're rotating out of plane. What do I mean by out of plane? You're looking at quaternions as being fourth dimensional. So when you do QU, you're actually rotating in the fourth dimension. So your result is going to be out of your 3D plane, which basically means it could look like anything. You need to then do a rotation back into the 3D plane. So you have QU, Q star, and that puts you back into your 3D plane so that what you get is similar to what you put in, it's just rotated. And so basically what we're doing is we're doing two half rotations. Now we just need to know how to define our vectors Q and U. Well U is going to be simple. U equals, and this is going to be our quaternion notation here, uh, we have scalar and then we have vector u, so u is made up of a, b, c, that'll be a, b, c. And this is going to be our scalar, and then we have component i, component j, component k. And that's basically it for u. Now for our quaternion q that we're going to be using to rotate this, this one's a bit more interestingly defined. Basically, we'll have our scalar. Our scalar is going to be equal to the cosine of our rotation angle theta over 2. So that's where theta, let's just define that uh, a bit more concrete up here, by angle theta. And this would be. Uh, this would be angle theta about the axis using a right-handed coordinate system. So cosine theta over 2 and then you have I, your I component. In this case your I component is going to be D and that's going to be multiplied by sine of theta over 2 E sine theta over 2 F sine theta over 2. And the reason we need to multiply by that sine of theta over 2 is to make sure that this remains a unit quaternion. If we take the uh, if we take the magnitude of this, the magnitude of this is going to be equal to, so magnitude of Q equals 1. We need that to be a unit quaternion, otherwise our result is going to be scaled. And uh, if you do have DEF, if you have that vector V as a unit vector, then uh, you can prove pretty easily that uh, this is going to be a unit length quaternion. This is equal to 1 since that is a unit length. And then we can use our proofs from uh, trigonometry. We know cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So equals 1. So the whole unit quaternion it works. It's equal to 1. So let's do a quick example. So let's say we have axis V equals 1, 1, 1. So basically you have your x, y, and z coordinates 1, 1, and 1. Now this is not a unit vector. Uh, to make this a unit vector we need to divide it by the square root of 3. So let's make it unit. We'll call this uh, small v, small v, 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3. So that's our unit vector that we're multiplying about. We want to rotate by theta equals 120 degrees. And what do we want to rotate? we're going to have vector 725. That's our vector. We're just rotating it about this axis at an angle of 120 degrees. Now, an interesting formula to look up is the Rodriguez formula, which I'll probably show that in another video if I have time. 
It's pretty simple. Basically, it's just plug in and you're good. If you're doing very simple rotations, then that might be preferable. If you wanted to use the Rodriguez formula, you could do that as well. I'd recommend looking that up if uh, you're just doing like simple rotations and you don't need anything as fancy as quaternions. But this is my personal preferred method. I just like quaternions. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of math, but it's rewarding in its own way. So let's take a look at this. Uh, first, we need to build our quaternion. And so to build the quaternion, we're going to be using this unit vector and this angle. So first of all, cos of 120 degrees, that's going to be equal to negative 0 0.5. And we'll have sine 120 degrees equals root 3 over 2. So now we basically multiply this all in and we have our q equals negative 0 0.5 and then multiply by all of these. And in this case, this is all going to be one half. And if we do a quick check, we will find that the magnitude of Q in D equals one. So that's good. We've uh, got a unit quaternion, and now we need to define what is this Q prime. I never quite defined that. What we will find is that Q star is equal to basically the same thing only the vector is negative. So the vector components become negative. So we'll have negative 0.5 again, only this time it'll be all negative 0.5. So basically all of these become negative. And that's about everything we need. So we're gonna find our rotated vector u prime equals, we'll have q times our vector our vector needs to be in a quaternion representation, which is relatively easy to do. That's going to be 0, 7, 2, 5, and then that's going to be multiplied by Q star. And now the interesting math gets uh, right on its way here, which I am going to skip over here. As you can see early on here, um, that's going to be a lot of math that we got to do here. But again, it's it basically this is my favorite way to do uh, rotations about an arbitrary axis. Rodriguez formula might be a bit more easy. I just like quaternions. That's me. Now we just need to add up all the components. So we're going to be adding up all the I's, all the J's, all the K's, and all the scalars. And now the second round of quaternion multiplications. So this is the answer that we get, which, if we check this, is wrong. And why is it wrong? Let's go back up to here where we define our angle. Angle is 120 degrees. But we define cos theta and sine theta. That's not what we're supposed to define. Because for the quaternions, we need to be using theta over 2. We're doing half rotations. So what we just did, actually, with all this math, is we doubled the rotation. So basically, this is for 240 degrees, is 240 degrees. I'm a bit rusty. I haven't actually done this in a few months. But 
basically, yeah, we accidentally rotated for 240 degrees. So what we would normally do, defining cos theta and sine theta, is we would do theta over 2. In this case, that would be 60 degrees. So cos theta over 2 would be positive 0 0.5, and sine theta over 2. So, small error. Nonetheless, all the math is pretty much the same. We just flip the sign on this guy uh, and this guy. So that's it for quaternion rotations. Relatively simple, just as long as you don't forget those simple rules. So it's Q equals cos theta over 2. And then we have D sine theta over 2. E sine theta over 2, F sine theta over 2, Q star equals cos theta over 2, negative D sine theta over 2, negative E sine theta over 2, negative F sine theta over 2, and we have our vector uh, def or we have our definition of rotation, so u prime rotated u equals q zero comma u q star, and this is basically our quaternion representation of vector u, and we apply that, we get the correct answer. In this case, this is for 240 degrees, and it is completely correct for 240 degrees. You just need to remember that this is not theta. This is theta over 2. Don't make the same mistake I did. I'm Arlington Matrix, formerly known as the Spider Pilot 747. Uh, have a great day.